The mighty Aztec Empire ruled over 5 million people in Mesoamerica between 1300 and 1521. Their power was unparalleled in Mesoamerica, but they used slavery, punishments, and sacrifices to bloodthirsty gods to build their empire. Welcome to History Uncharted. Today, we'll be telling you what they did to their slaves. It was extremely unpleasant. Becoming a Slave Slavery was important in the Aztec Empire. They were called Tlacotli. The empire was based on a rigid social class structure. Every person in the empire learned and knew their place, the very bottom of the hierarchy of power. The Aztecs were not born into slavery, and children born to slaves were free. People became slaves because they were captured in war, because they committed a crime, because they couldn't pay off their gambling debts, or because they were courtesans. To escape from slavery, they had to pay their debts to their master. If you stole something from someone, and you got caught, and you couldn't pay that person back, you had to become their slave. If you attempted to free or to help a slave, you risked becoming a slave too. The Emperor Moctezuma II declared that traitors and their families should be turned into slaves, and that their property should belong to him. He also made slaves out of astrologers, who didn't read the omens right. Slave owners had to give their slaves water, food, and shelter, but if a master wasn't satisfied with his slave, he could punish them as he liked. Female Aztec slave owners could marry their slaves. For example, if her husband died, she could remarry one of his slaves. One interesting characteristic of Aztec society is social mobility. Aztec slaves could rise through the social hierarchies. One of the most important and honorable spiritual rituals is to wash the slaves before they are sacrificed. This is called Tealtiani. Collaring Slaves The Aztec Empire ruled over Mesoamerica for over 200 years. It dominated 371 city-states across 38 provinces. But for a mighty power to succeed, strict rules have to be put into place to control people. Slaves were the property of their masters, but of course there were slaves that wanted to be free and that didn't want to belong to any master. Sadly, that didn't work out. Punishments for trying to run away weren't light. Slaves received beatings, brandings, strangling, and burnings, all of them painful and some of them fatal. Emotional punishments existed too in the Aztec Empire. Slaves who got in trouble for bad behavior, laziness, or even trying to escape were forced to wear wooden collars with a loop attached to the back. This was uncomfortable. These wooden collars were a clear symbol of bad behavior. Free people spat on the slaves that were wearing these collars. The slaves that were wearing these collars didn't have much chance of escaping in a crowd without being spotted. If you bought a slave with a collar in the market at Tenochtitlan, the capital of the empire, the collar would tell you how many times the slave had been bought and sold. If the slave has been sold more than three times, they are obviously not that great. These rebellious or useless slaves might be sold next time as a sacrifice. They were sold at a premium price because they were great for sacrificing to the gods. There were, however, opportunities for collared slaves to be freed. Some were given as presents to royal palaces or temples. Some gained freedom by standing on excrement. If the judges agreed, these slaves could be washed, given new clothing, and freed. Sacrificed During religious ceremonies and festivals, slaves were chosen to be sacrificed. They symbolized God. By sacrificing their slaves, the community believed that they would satisfy their gods, who in turn would grant them prosperity. The sacrificial ritual entailed that the slave should be placed lying down on the sacrificial stone, tied up and cut open. They cut open their chest with an obsidian blade while they were still conscious and pulled out their heart. They extracted the heart, Tona, of the slave because it liberated the heat, Istli, and reunited it with the sun. The heart could then fly sunward on a trail of blood. The living relatives of the sacrificed slave were then permitted to take the other body parts home, minus the heart, and eat them with corn and salt. This might not seem particularly yummy. It is a form of cannibalism after all. But it had an important symbolic significance. But being sacrificed was considered an honor, at least by the ones that did the sacrificing. This was Aztec custom and belief. Despite being a slave and doing hard labor for a lord that owned you body and soul, you could easily end up dead. 
For example, if your dearly beloved lord passed away, he would be cremated with 20 male slaves and 20 female slaves. This is so that the slaves could help the master in the underworld, the same as they helped him in his life. So, good luck with that. Prisoners of war also had a tough time under the Aztecs. There were no prisons, so the death penalty was one of the most common forms of punishment. Aztec warriors would return after battle with hundreds of slaves to be sacrificed. The Aztecs came up with creative ways of getting rid of their prisoners. Ritual sacrifice was among the most creative. Captives were also introduced to bonfires and barbecues, the only problem being that the barbecues were them. Prisoners were placed inside the fire and slowly cooked. That's not exactly the kind of bonfire we've ever been invited to. Hopefully you agree. But they were common in the time of the Aztecs. During the bonfire, these prisoners would be thrust in and out of the fire before their hearts were cut out of their chests. This was not rare. Their hearts were well done. Fighting for Freedom The Aztec government was led by the leader Hue Tlatuani. The Aztecs believed that this leader, Hue Tlatuani, had been divinely appointed and that he spoke the will of the gods. The priests offered their religious guidance to the judges. Together, they came up with the punishments. One punishment allowed prisoners of war to fight for their freedom. If they won, they were freed. If they lost, they lost their lives. Captured warriors were tied to rocks and given a flattened club as a weapon to defend themselves against their Aztec opponents. The Aztec fighters, on the other hand, had an advantage. The edges of their clubs were sharpened. Sometimes they tied the ankles of the Aztec warriors to a platform, making it a bit more of a challenge, so sometimes the prisoners would win their freedom. Arrows In this next grueling punishment, the Aztecs chained up their prisoners in a standing position with a post on each side of them. Then a white dot was painted on his or her chest, roughly where the heart would be. Archers would then aim at them and fire their arrows, but here's the catch. They have to hit every part of the body apart from the heart and head. Those were safe for last. That would hurt. Serious crimes that garnered this form of punishment included theft from a temple, theft from merchants, theft of weapons or military insignia, substantial theft of corn, the sacred grain. The Aztecs treated adultery as a serious crime that could see both of the guilty couple tied up to a post and fired at. People who knew and kept silent about the adulterous relationship could also suffer the same fate. They considered men having relations with married women or unmarried women taking lovers to be adultery, so there was a double standard. Countless lovers suffered this terrible chastisement. It was very easy to be fired at under Aztec law. Beheading A simple crime like disobeying a master could see a slave losing his or her head. It was the master's choice how he punished his slaves. He would get their heads cut off for more or less anything at all, including his own amusement. Crimes like homicide, sexual assault, incest, abortion, witchcraft, treason, desertion, destruction of crops, public drunkenness, all qualified for beheading. After being tried by the local court, the slaves who have committed these crimes could be taken to the local temple altar to receive their capital punishment. But women were treated a little differently from men as they do in most societies. But in the Aztec Empire, women, including slaves and prisoners, were treated as goddesses until the moment of their passing. Then they were beheaded. In general, it was more common for slaves to be beheaded than nobles. However, nobles were not immune to this type of punishment either. The rulers, the priests, and the judges made examples of these high-class criminals. This public spectacle took place at the emperor's palace. There, the emperor himself played the judge. Child punishment was no joke. Children were just as much at risk of being punished as adults, and we're not just talking about getting spanked. Children often had to pay the ultimate price, with their lives. Children are considered sweet and innocent in most places in the world, but not in the Aztec Empire. The Aztecs often sold their children into slavery. They were made to wear garments known as cuetl. This was a colorless skirt that was wrapped around the slave's waist and fastened with a belt. This would reflect their extremely low status in society. Child slaves were often sent to rural areas to slave in the cocoa fields. Even children under the age of 10 were punished severely by the courts. Children who assaulted their parents stood an excellent chance of being beaten, disinherited, or executed, a very severe punishment by anyone's standard. Parents didn't take any nonsense from the children. If they disobeyed them, they were taken straight to court. 
children of nobility were treated the worst. They would receive the worst form of punishment because the children of the nobles were considered cowardly, disrespectful, and wasteful. Times have changed. In those days, you couldn't get away with crimes just because you had money.